guys, it's Ashley with Creative Fabrica, ready with some fresh creative insights just for you. Today we are designing in studio on our Creative Fabrica website and I can't wait to get started. Studio is such a fun software that is filled with vibrant graphic and it's so easy to use, but the print on demand integration is by far my favorite. Today, we're going to be using our Printful integration template to create these adorable pet bandanas. There are a few different ways to navigate over to Studio. Right on our main page, you can click on Studio. You could also just click Design Now, and that'll take you right over to Studio. Or my personal favorite way is just to go to studio.creativefabrica.com. I actually just have it set up as a bookmark, and it just makes it so much easier when I wanna just design and go right into it. First and foremost, we want to create a new design, and this is going to allow us to pick the template that we wanna work with. As I mentioned, we're going to be using our Printful templates. So right under where it says partners, I'm going to click on Printful and it's going to populate all the different types of templates that we have already integrated with Printful. I'm gonna scroll down until I see bandana. When you look over here in the settings, you'll see that it has changed it to 27 by 27 inches and it's at 300 DPI automatically. So another really great reason to use the templates provided from Printful. I want to create a background first. And since it's gonna be a seamless pattern, I want a solid background color. I'm gonna grab a square and I'm just gonna make it the size of the canvas. From here, I'm going to select the color picker and I'm gonna choose a color that I feel would fit my design best. And I'm gonna choose this kind of olive green tone. At this point, I don't want my background to move like this when I am using the other elements. So I'm gonna go ahead and lock this layer. So over in the layers panel, you can see that we have square filled and that's what this is here. And I'm just going to click this lock button and that's gonna make it to where I can't move it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and create some simple elements out of the basic shapes. So choosing the square, I'm going to create a fairly thin rectangle and then I'm going to go up here to the color picker and I'm gonna change that to a gray. Now I'm going to choose the triangle and we're going to make the top of the tree using this triangle here. So I'm gonna once again go up to the color picker. I'm gonna grab the eyedropper so that I can just hover it above that color I created and I'm just going to be able to click it and then it'll automatically change the color. Now I can just select this triangle, hold the Alt key down and it will duplicate it. Then I'm gonna shrink this down a bit and put it in a good position for that second portion of the tree. That's pretty cute, but I think it would look better with three. So I'm gonna do the same thing again, holding the Alt key down. You could also duplicate up here, but I just like the sh keyboard shortcut. Shrinking that down and we're going to move that over. Okay, so now I have my cute little tree. I'm gonna make this a few different colors. So I'm going to grab it and I'm going to hold the Alt key down and then drag one over here and then another one over here. I'm going to want three different colors. So this makes it a little easier to grab each one. Now I have three sets of trees in three different colors. I'm gonna go ahead and grab each tree and group it together over here. The next element I want to create is a mountain. We're going to make two triangles and I'm gonna make one slightly smaller, spread it out a bit, see if I like that for a mountain. I might make it a little bit shorter and then this one a bit shorter until I think I have a good mountain shape. I like that. Now I'm going to make three of these as well in these same coordinating colors. Perfect. So once again, I'm going to go ahead and group each mountain together. At this point, I just wanna go grab maybe a few abstract shapes that are going to fit in with the theme. I really want it to look like a modern style adventure theme. So I'm going to be using some abstract shapes and I like these squigglies because they kind of remind me of water. So I'm going to grab that one. And again, I'm making three different each thing in all three colors. So I'm going to just grab each element, eyedropper, each one to the corresponding color scheme. And then I'm thinking I want some sort of a blob like this shape, but one that feels more like water. This one looks quite a bit like water. Now that I'm seeing this color here, I'd really like to use that color instead of this gray. I think that pops a lot more and it gives a little bit more dimension to the design. 
So now it's time for my absolute favorite part, and that is organizing all of these beautiful elements that we've created, grabbing some more elements from the different sections. I'm using abstract shapes because I just love the overall modern feel to them. I'm also utilizing some of these other colors that are coming automatically with these abstract shapes because it's really complementing the design overall. Right now, you're not trying to create a pattern so you don't have to stress out about whether these seams or anything is going to line up. My best advice is at this time, keep things off of the edges. I do find it's just a lot better and it's not as hectic if you keep things off the edges. I do like to, to put my elements close to the edge so that it's not such a blank space in between the seams. But overall, we're just trying to create a really cool looking tile, something that when it is creating into a pattern, it's just going to pop and look good overall. So just really fill it up, really fill up the whole canvas. And then from here, we're going to be able to create our pattern. Once you feel like your design is nice and completed, what you'll want to do is go ahead and click share and then download and then download the JPEG. If you're nervous to delete this or you want to keep it, then you would want to go and create a new document. But for my sake, I do not want to keep it. So I'm going to go ahead and delete everything. So we're clicking on uploads and we are just going to upload the file that we just created. Once you have uploaded your design, you're going to want to make sure that it's selected and then you're going to go up right here where it has the four different squares and we're going to do repeat on background. Now you can adjust this any which way you'd like. For me, what I like to do is I like to grab it, delete the main picture behind it, and then I shrink it down and I fit it perfectly on my canvas. As you can see, we now have a beautiful pattern, but sometimes when we do this, we will get these little hair lines. You could probably see the little hairline right here. What you'll want to do is click ungroup and kind of shimmy the design. So sometimes it's beneficial to zoom in. And see now we can see that hairline right here between these two that we couldn't see before when we had it zoomed out. So what I like to do is I like to zoom in, like I said, select one side and use the arrow keys to inch it over. So I'll just do one, two, over and then I'll click off and see if that line is now gone. And that line is now gone. So since I moved this one over here, two clicks to the left, I'm gonna do that same thing with the bottom one here. One, two with the arrow key. That keeps everything remaining the same. And I'm gonna basically do that same situation, but I'm gonna do it with the bottom one and I'm gonna move it up. So I'm gonna go one, two, and then one, two on the arrow keys. That is how I like to do it. And then I like to come up here and then zoom out, click off and see if that has solved the problem. I don't see any lines anymore, so we're good to go. The next thing you'll wanna do since we did bump it over, just make sure that you are still the correct size on the edges. You can do that again by zooming in, scrolling up to the top, clicking off, and just making sure that that background color goes to the edge. And it does. At this point, you can add in different elements if you would like, but you'll wanna make sure that if you do, you're adding them towards the center, making sure nothing is going towards the edge. To give you an example, let's say that I grabbed this design here. I could then add that to the center or anywhere I wanted to, but I wouldn't be able to put it over here because that would ruin our seamless pattern. So if at this point you're wanting to add anything to your design, just make sure that you're adding it towards the center and not on any of the edges. After you have done this portion, you are completely done and you can go ahead and save the same way we did the first time and you are good to go to upload onto Printful. Thank you so much for coming along and watching while we created our print on demand design in studio today. If you liked the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and make sure to hit the bell so that you never miss a video. Thanks so much for watching. Stay crafty and we'll see you next time.